in order to determine the molality of the zinc and the molarity of the zinc in this solution, we will begin the problem by assuming that the solution has a particular mass. Now, it turns out that the simplest assumption is to use one kilogram as the mass of the solution, which of course is equivalent to 1,000 grams. You could use other masses, but one kilogram is the most convenient choice. Now, recall that they gave us the density of this solution. And that density of a solution is equal to the mass of the solution divided by the volume of the solution. We have both the density and now we have the mass. So this value and this value are known. What we can do is actually solve for the volume of our solution. And to do that, why don't we first multiply both sides of this equation by the volume of the solution. This way, they'll cancel out on the right-hand side. And then to finish solving for the volume of the solution, we will divide both sides of the equation by the density of the solution. So then the densities will cancel out on the left-hand side, and we are left with the expression that the volume is equal to the mass divided by the density. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll plug in the values of mass and density. And when we divide 1 by 8750, the, the kilograms are going to cancel out, and we're going to be left with approximately 1.143 times 10 to the negative 4, and then the unit would be meters cubed. And that's the volume of our solution. It will be convenient to convert the volume of the solution into liters rather than meters cubed. We will see why that is in just a moment. So let's take the volume of our solution and let's convert this into liters. And we can do that because we recall that one liter is 10 to the minus three meters cubed. So if we set it up in this manner, then the meters cubed will cancel out and that will leave us with just liters. So essentially you're dividing by 10 to the negative three. And when you do that, you get a volume of 0.114 liters. So that is a result that we're going to want to hold on to and refer back to shortly. Now, moving on to part A, which wanted the molality of zinc. That means we're going to need to know two things, the moles of the solute, or in this case, the moles of zinc, and then the kilograms of solvent. Now we have to notice that the solvent is actually the copper. And we know this because if we go back to the given info, we can see that the majority of this solution was copper. It was 80%, whereas only 20% was zinc. The majority value is going to be your solvent. It's the component that's present in the greatest abundance, whereas the zinc would be considered the solute because it's present in the least abundance. So that's an important aspect of this question to note that the copper is the solvent and the zinc is the solute. So to get the moles of zinc and the kilograms of solvent, we go back to our assumption that we had 1,000 grams total, also known as one kilogram. That was the entire mass of our solution. 80% of that is going to be copper and 20% is zinc. Now, of course, 80% of 1,000 grams is 800 grams, and then 20% is 200 grams. Notice that 800 grams, if you move this decimal place over three times to the left, you would get 0.8 kilograms. So this means that in the denominator, the kilograms of our copper solvent is going to equal 0.8. And then we can take the 200 grams of zinc and convert it into moles of zinc. And then we have the molality. So let's take 200 grams of zinc. And we know from the periodic table that one mole of zinc has a mass of 65.39 grams. You can confirm that by looking it up on the periodic table. When you perform this division 200 divided by 65.39, you get about 3.06 moles of zinc. So again, we're gonna take the moles of zinc and the kilograms of our copper solvent and determine the molality. So 
the molality symbolized by little m would equal the moles of our zinc solute divided by the kilograms of our copper solvent. And we divide this out and we get about 3.82. And that would be little m of zinc. So this would be the correct answer to part A. We can now go on to part B, which wanted the molarity of zinc. And luckily we have obtained all of the required information. There is a nice formula we can use for molarity that we will copy and paste down below here. So this is part B. And molarity will be the moles of solute, which again is the zinc, divided by the liters of solution. Now, the solution was zinc plus copper. We determined the liters of that solution earlier. If you go back to this result, we now can use it. It's 0.114 liters of solution. So we take our moles of the zinc solute and divide that by the liters of the entire solution. And when we work this value out, we get approximately 26.8. And the unit for molarity is capital M. So this would be the correct answer to part B.